For most Americans, the number one question about the tax bill is, will I be paying more or less of my hard-earned money to Uncle Sam? Well, there's nobody better to ask than a champion of tax cuts, a friend of liberty, and a friend of this show, Republican Congressman from the great state of Kentucky, Thomas Massey, is back. Congressman, welcome back. Thanks, Kennedy. Yes, almost all Americans are going to see a tax cut under this program, as long as they pay taxes. It's hard to give you a tax cut if you don't pay taxes. I don't but... know. Ask your friend Marco Rubio uh, with the, <laughs> the child tax credit. Yeah, well, uh, that's they essentially got that in a subsidy for, for people who pay no taxes. They're going to get money back from the government uh, for the bold step of having children. Yeah, some of these tax credits, you know, sh probably should have been reduced and weren't. There's a lot of tax cuts in this bill. There's not as much reform as it started out with, but the tax cuts are the important thing. That's what the president pushed for. And so you're going to see most Americans are going to see a tax cut from this. All right, so let's talk about the corporate tax rate because I think that this is really promising and important. And there are a lot of people on the left, including some left leaning economists, who say there is no guarantee that lowering the corporate tax rate will do anything for working Americans. What do you say to that claim? Well, the past 200 years of our country shows that it's going to work. It's called capitalism. When you let the companies keep more of the money, they're going to reinvest that money. And people are asking, okay, but what if they just give dividends to their shareholders? What if they just buy back stock? What if they just sit on the money? Well, if they do that, their competitors are going to invest money in better equipment, in training their employees, and the, the ones who sit on the cash or just distribute it are going to fall behind. That's the way capitalism works. Yes, and but you make such a good point and and that is about distribution and in the private sector with the free market corporations whether they're tiny corporations s corps or target they should be the ones to choose where that revenue goes and you're, you're right if they just sit on it or if if they go ahead and reward their shareholders that is their right and there are those in government uh, who want to redistribute it for themselves. The Bernie Sanders of the world want to turn corporate America into Venezuela. Um, you know, we shouldn't leave out the other great benefit of lowering the corporate rate to 21 percent. That means we're not going to punish companies for doing business in the United States, which means more of the manufacturing is going to occur in the United States than did before. That's a great thing. Regardless of the capital question, you're going to have companies that were moving offshore that decide to stay here or companies that did move offshore that are going to come back because of this lower rate. All right, so we're always vigilant uh, about civil liberties on this show. It's been tough to talk about because we've spent so much time talking about the Russia investigation and, uh, of course, this tax plan. But there is an important deadline looming for Section 702 of the FISA Act. Tell me, what is the status of that and what are you hoping to achieve? Well, the FISA Act ostensibly allows our government to spy on foreigners. The problem is the FBI has been using this as a backdoor to spy on Americans. This program expires on December 31st, so we have a real opportunity to reform it literally this week because it will expire if we don't get these reforms. A lot of conservatives, myself, some of my friends in the Freedom Caucus, and some civil libertarians on the, on the Democrat side of the aisle are pushing very hard to get a... a uh, an amendment in there that I have offered in, in previous years, and it's passed in previous years, but never made it into final law. Yeah. This amendment would require a warrant if you want to go into this spy database and surveil Americans. That's all we're asking for. Get a warrant. Yeah, and, and that's fair, that's constitutional, and that's how it should happen. You can still catch bad guys. You can still use technology and appropriate surveillance. Uh, most rational people aren't against that, but what they do want, we agreed to play by the rule book that is the U.S. Constitution. And you have to abide by that no matter uh, where you sit in the federal government or in law enforcement. That's only fair. That's only right. So what are the chances of an amendment like that making it into law? Well, one, one of three things is going to happen. Either this is going to expire and the whole program goes away on December 31st, not likely, or we get an amendment in there and we change it, or as a Congress is want to do, they may just punt this a month yeah, and course. then we'll bring up the argument in January. But we need to stand strong here in the House and keep them from reauthorizing this for like four or eight years without any changes. They made a play to do that last night and we shut them down, literally. So they're scrambling today to figure out how to write a bill that will pass Congress. Where is the Freedom Caucus? Program. Where's the Freedom Caucus on FISA? 
You know, I met with the Freedom Caucus last night, and they're pretty strong on this issue. It seems to me like they're ready to fight on this because, look, not only do we stand up for the Tenth Amendment and the Second Amendment, this is a Fourth Amendment issue. Absolutely. The, it requires, you know, if you want, if the government wants to surveil people, the Constitution requires that they get a warrant, that they have probable cause, and they name the people and things to be seized. Absolutely. Thank you for seizing this opportunity to come talk with us on the show. Have a beautiful Christmas, Congressman.